Hi, welcome back to Local Spotlight. I'm Jerry Nissen. I'm here today with Patrick Brower, and Patrick is with the Grand Enterprise Initiative. Patrick, welcome. Thank you, Jerry. Glad to be here. Patrick, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Grand Enterprise Initiative and what you really do? Well, Jerry, the Grand Enterprise Initiative is what some people would call a grassroots economic development program, but it's really simply the process whereby our group offers free and confidential business management coaching to anybody wanting to start or expand a business in Grand County. So it, it's free. How is your organization funded? Well, we're funded by uh, a combination of uh, nonprofits and government. Uh, the town of Granby and uh, Grand County contribute a significant amount, but mm -hmm. so does KPOX, a nonprofit founded by Marisi Cipriani. Okay. She also funds the effort, as does also the town of Winter Park. All right, so Winter Park's involved as well. So do you cover the whole county? Yes. Uh, we originally started out covering uh, just the Granby area, since Granby was our major funder. But we realized after uh, six months that businesses, even in just the Granby area, have as their entire market the whole county. So we decided that we really had to go countywide in order to help those business people in Granby, but also to help all the businesses in the county because uh, we were capable of working with all the businesses in the county. Makes sense. And how, how do people find you? How do you find people? Do you go looking for potential clients? Well, a key aspect of our math methodology, Jerry, is that uh, I don't uh, walk by a guy who's opening a business, say, on Main Street in Kremling and walk in and say, hey, I'm Patrick, I'm here to help you. Uh, <clears throat> we only respond to people who ask for help based on the idea that you can only help people who want to be helped. And that is a, uh, a tenet of uh, Ernesto Soroli's enterprise facilitation methodology, which, uh, based on his experience in uh, NGOs around the world, found that when you go to a place and try to help, uh, if the people haven't asked for it, frequently they're not going to do much with the help you offer and uh, may result in just a waste of time and effort. So the first tenet is help people who want to be helped. That makes sense. That makes sense. And your methodology springs from uh, Ernesto Soroli's uh, approach right. and training? Right. Ernesto Soroli uh, uh, founded the Soroli Institute. Uh, and the Soroli Institute uh, is an entity uh, based now in Sacramento, California, which promulgates the vision of enterprise facilitation. He's done it in uh, 300 communities around the world. 300, really? Yes. He's uh, got started in Australia, but since then, uh, the program has expanded to uh, New Zealand. Uh, there are several programs in the United States. Uh, he's had programs in uh, Scotland, Wales, England, uh, Africa, uh, Canada, all around the world. Enterprise facilitation has proven to be a very viable uh, grassroots economic development model with a success rate uh, proven in several communities uh, of 80%. After five years, businesses who started using this methodology are still in business. That's extraordinary. Um, and we feel it's because uh, our methodology uh, uses several particular things that, that help move forward with the business. Number one is it's one-on-one. -on -one. In right. other words, uh, I work directly, confidentially, with uh, a potential business owner or a business owner, which means um, <clears throat> I coach individually with that person more than just one visit or two. In fact, if the person asks for 100 visits, that's how many times I will visit with them wow. to help work them through the process. So one-on-one -on -one is key. Number two is confidential. We do not share, I do not share information that uh, my clients share with me, not even with my wife. Uh, I uh, want to keep it confidential because number one, most entrepreneurs don't want to share their ideas with the world, sure. especially if it's a competitive venture. And secondly, uh, if somebody's thinking of doing something and they come to me and uh, uh, they're still tentative on their idea and I go out and blab to the world that, uh, hey, uh, this guy here is going to go out and start a new uh, auto manufacturing plant right here in Granby and after three visits he decides he's not going to do it and I've told everybody he's already a failure and he hasn't done a thing. Right. 
So right. plus yeah. you could just be giving the idea to someone else. Exactly. They um, take it and run with it. The service is free. And I want to emphasize that it's free, and it's free for a reason. Frequently, entrepreneurs just don't have the money to go out and pay somebody to sit down and coach them right. for three visits, one visit, or even 20 visits, if that's sure. what it takes to get through the process. So I work for a nonprofit, the Grand Enterprise Initiative, which pays me to offer this coaching so that entrepreneurs have a free resource that will then connect them to other resources. Um, <clears throat> So it's one-on-one, -on -one, right. it's free, mm -hmm. and it's confidential. Has, has this approach been used in other small communities? Like Grand County only has a population of 12 or 13,000 people for the whole county. That's a great question. I find that this methodology, yeah, to answer your question, yes, it has. Um, in fact, uh, last uh, fall I was visiting uh, with several other enterprise facilitators in communities in uh, northwestern Kansas and okay. in uh, northeastern Missouri, where they have several enterprise facilitation programs in place. Uh, these are rural areas, not large metropolitan areas, right. where this methodology works particularly well because people in rural areas can tend to be living in solitude. They feel like they're living by themselves. Absolutely. And, and Ernesto Ciroli preaches, and it is true, that death that solitude is the death of the entrepreneur. If an entrepreneur thinks he or she is going to be able to go out and make their product, sell their product, and watch after the books all by his or herself, they're doomed to not succeed because no one person can do all those three things themselves. So you try and help entrepreneurs, help, help people in existing businesses as well as people who are hoping to start a new business, assemble a team, you, you have That's connections that you try and put someone who's a good marketer in touch with someone who can do the product and someone else who can handle the books? Is that yes. a big focus for you? It is, uh, it is the primary focus of what I do. For someone who wants to start a business, uh, I make sure that they have in place a team based on my assessment of the client. Uh, let's say the client is really good at product and maybe also good at marketing. Well, my experience has shown me that there's nobody that's good at marketing who's also good at financial management. Sure. So uh, in working with the client, I will then help them find a financial manager in that particular case. Um, frequently, the client is usually just the product or the service, and then I end up then helping them find the other two members of the team to do the marketing and the financial management. And the first place we look is within their own circle of friends and family. Mm -hmm. Because if a person's gonna be putting together a team to help make their business to succeed, to make it grow, they need to be working people they're comfortable with. Sure, you have to know and trust those that you're working exactly. with. Exactly. So I first ask, uh, so who do you know that's, uh, who in your church group, for instance, is really always promotes the bake sale or is out there making sure uh, all the kids know about the Easter egg hunt that's coming up? And I say, oh, that's uh, Betty. She's really good at that, you know. Perfect. And I say, let's go talk to Betty and see if she would like to help you so she's market your, your business. So she's marketing director. Right. right. Um, and then perhaps, uh, uh, with a, as a different example, I'll say, uh, who who on your uh, in your service club? I happen right. to be a member of the Rotary Club in Granby. Who in your service club does the books? Yeah. You know, uh, would that person be willing to help you uh, not only do the books but plan forward? for your business as we figure out what you're going to do with your business and maybe do some financial projections. Well, you're a Rotarian, I'm a lion, so <laughs> we shouldn't talk about that. Actually. Hey, we work together, Jerry, actually, quite <laughs> a bit. We do, we do. And along we those do. lines, Jerry, we try to, that's another thing we really do, and key to this whole process is the networking between different entities and different groups. Great. Let's hold that thought. Uh, we'll be back in just a minute with Patrick Brower and a final word. Thanks for sticking with us. I'm Jerry Nissen. We're here on the Local Spotlight with Patrick Brower. Patrick, people seem to think that Grand County 
is so different than the rest of the world for doing business. Is, is that what you're finding, or do we have more similarities than people think? Well, you know, Jerry, I found that some people think that, but in reality, Grant County is just like anywhere else in the United States or the world when it comes to really uh, being a successful entrepreneur. The, the essentials of business have to be in place in order to succeed, but mainly a person has to have the passion to want to do what they're doing. And I'm hoping that we have those people with that passion come forward to talk to me mm -hmm. about their idea, their notion of how to succeed. Because here, right here in Grant County, there are many people who have been sitting there thinking about, I've always wanted to do this, or gee, I've been working in my garage making right. this product for so many years. I'd really like to make a living at this. Sure. But I don't have a clue as to how to do it. There are people that have the passion but are afraid to afraid to step and forward try and earn a living doing it exactly and i deeply believe that in grant county we have many people of great intelligence and great skill absolutely who have that passion but just don't know how to turn that passion into a practical result in their life and if we can help people move forward to make that a business at which they can succeed and make a living we have just helped create another family who's happy living in grant county right who's contributing to the local economy and who's happy to be here and happy to be a member of our great community. People that are doing what they love rather than what they think is just required of them. Exactly. And uh, finding that passion is a critical element of our program. Uh, that's why we want people to step forward and share that passion with me. And by being confidential about it, I want them to understand that I'm not going to go and spill their idea, spill their dream to the world. Right. It's just between that client and me until the point comes that they say, hey, I'm at the point where I need so much help that I want you to talk to your resource team. And I wanted to bring up what our resource team is. We have a resource team that right now is 35 people who have agreed to work with me once a month, confidentially, to help me find the networks and connections that my clients might need in order to succeed. Th these resource people, what's, what are their backgrounds? Their backgrounds what, are anybody who's willing to step forward and help. Frequently, they're retired business people or people who are in business in the county right now. Mm -hmm. They sign a confidentiality agreement, and I go to them once a month, and all I ask them to share with me are their contacts so that we okay. can get, share their network with me so I can share their network with my client so my client can find those resources, whether it's a marketing resource, whether they need a lawyer, right. whether they need somebody who knows about the product or service this person is offering, I have access to a lot of people who know people. And that networking is critical to helping these entrepreneurs and business people succeed. That sounds great. Patrick, thanks very much. Uh, I've been here today with Patrick Brower. I'm Jerry Nissen. This is Local Spotlight. Thanks for staying with us and tune in again. Thanks for having me.